is truly a phenomenon. Dharamdev Pishorimal Anand has spanned an entire era and kept himself in showroom condition. In our rendezvous, we talked about movies, men, women, love, about an incredible career and an incredible man, Dev Anand. Dev Sab, this is wonderful to have you here. Thank you. You know, when I, when I just joined films, you'd signed me up for Teen Devya, and I can't forget the excitement I felt at working with Dev Anand. I remember I saw you on the sets, and I was planning a film called Teen Devya, and I said to myself, who's this girl, this pretty girl? <laughs> so I told them I'd just bring her over for a good role, and you, you were in. <laughs> How wonderful. Yeah. But you know, I feel the same excitement at having you on my show today. You are the same. You look so attractive, so elegant. <laughs> you know that? Thank Other you. people must have told you. I watch you only for this because you look so pretty. Oh, so yes. So charming. <laughs> and a good interviewer. You, you know, you, you can still charm anybody. <laughs> this is Devan and Charm yeah, go at ahead, its best. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Do you know, um, it's so difficult to compress an extraordinary life of eight years into a one-hour time capsule. It's just not possible, Dave. Very long, 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 long time. C can we just journey back through the milestones? Mm -hmm. Dave, you used to write a diary, didn't you? I write a diary even now. Oh, good. I, I, I write my milestones. I write important things that have happened during the days. So can we just turn back the pages of your diary? Okay. You grew up in the 1920s in Gurdaspur. I was born in Gurdaspur and uh, then I grew there until the age of say, about 12, 13, 14. I always believe that, you know, uh, the time between the age of 1 and 12 and 1 and 13, you know, sort of shapes irrevocably the kind of person you become. I never realized. You don't? You don't uh, realize it till later no, in life? I grew up as an upper middle class man in, 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 the, in the township. So what did you get from your childhood that shaped you and your future? My mother. My father. When a child is born and the child grows up, the first inference is the parents. It's true. A mother's relationship is the first relationship a boy has with the first woman he knows. Yes. It affects you for the way you look at women for the rest of your life because she's the first woman you've ever known. I used to be very close to her, hug her, and be wanting to be very, very cuddlesome in, ter in terms of my, my mother and she died. She was very ill. She was ill. But I believe you nursed her a lot. I used to go up and get up every morning at 4 o'clock in the morning and bring goat's milk for her. I used to go by buses to Amritsar. Amritsar is about 35 miles from Gurdaspur and buy her uh, medicines from near the Hall Bazaar near the Golden Temple in the middle of June. June means severe, severe summer, burning heat. But I, 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 did, I, I felt good because I was doing something. I wanted her to, to get well. I didn't want to lose her. Yeah. You were such a young boy, in a sense, you turned mother to your own mother. Do you realize that? Yes, I was mothering her. I was uh, her doctor. I was close to her. And I was concerned because I remember I used to, you know, on the parapet in, in the Punjab houses, mm -hmm. you sit in the evenings and see the trespass is going down and I would ask her, evening sunset is always very lonely, yes. mother what would happen to me if I ever die? She said, don't be silly, I never die, but she died a few months later. Goldie says that um, we can never be as great as Dave Saab because he had the blessings of his dying mother. Yeah, in a way, yes, I think so, because Goldie was a kid. I was the only child beside her and I, was, I nursed her, that's why probably she blessed me and she, 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 she got hold of my hand and my father was standing and she told my father, this son of mine will be absolutely going places, remember my word. I can't forget this sentence, I never realized then I was a middle class boy that I would be really, I don't think I'm big, nobody's ever big, but I'm successful. I remember my mother's lines. Mm. And, uh, and then, then she, then was, she picked was picked up in technical sanatorium in, in, in Hill Station. Station. And I cried. I cried. And then she never returned. The news was broken to us. And somebody very cruelly came and opened the door and said, Hey, your mother's dead. And it a, well, it is a cruel sentence, but spoken very cruelly. Because it doesn't concern the world. 
who dies, who doesn't die. It only concerns the relations, the people who are relatives, the father, the, the, the son, the daughter, the husband. And my father, my father was brilliant, but he was also a very severe father. He was very stern. He was a strong man, tremendous ego. And he was a taskmaster, he was very strict. He was a harsh man, but tremendously intelligent. But my mother, my mother was gentle, very gentle. And I think my temperament is also very gentle, very gentle. Didn't somebody predict something about your future in Amritsar? Yes, you read about this. I tell you something. And I used to go to Amritsar by bus from Gurdaspur to buy medicine for my mother. Mm. And in the hall bazaar near the Golden Temple, there used to be a, a shop of sherbet. Mm. And I said, I want the badam sherbet. So he put the sherbet in the glass and he gave it to me. And he's, as he stretched his hand out towards me, his eyes got pinned onto my forehead. And he said, oh, bow. Tere mathe te bada vada suraj hai gaya which means you have sun on your forehead, you'll be a big man one day. I took it very lightly, but today I remember, I said, this man, uncanny man from nowhere, he was not an astrologer. Though financially poor, I'm emotionally rich. My spirit is free, and I'm in love with my spirit. What triggered your decision to join films? Nobody told me. I think I must have looked at myself in the mirror. <laughs> you must have said, this is and, a handsome and, and, guy. And said to myself, look, what's wrong with me? If somebody <laughs> else can be... Ashok Kumar was a big star yeah. those days. And so was Moti Lal and Prithvi Raj Kapoor. And, we, you, and Gurdas was a small town. There were no cinema theatres. Mm. So I m must have, somewhere within me, looked at myself and realized, because I was popular in the school. Sure. Girls used to follow me and I used to feel very shy. Shy? So I, I thought to myself, there must be something about me. I said, looked at myself, <laughs> my face, I said, look, I can be presentable. But you were gorgeous. So my own conscious, my own inner self must have made up its, its mind to go to Bombay. Did you tell your father about this decision to join no, films? No, he didn't know. I was in Lahore, he was in Gurdaspur. And he couldn't have approved? No, I, I, I never bothered to ask. I didn't care. So you were not very close to him? There was no great no. bond? I was very scared of my father. Yeah. I was close to my mother. And once your mother had died, there was no reason then, to stay yeah, back? Then, then it was uh, another chapter. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going. And I'll, I'll make something out of myself. I came to Bombay in 1943. You were not born. No. Many people were not born in the movies. I did not know anybody in Bombay when I landed in the Bombay Central. Bombay looked huge to a small town boy. I was sitting in the Victoria and I was looking up all the time at the high rises. Elegant, rich, sophisticated. Bombay changed. It's not the same. It was very rare to come to Bombay those days. When you're talking of 1943, you're talking of the British, British regime, the British Raj. Mm -hmm. And I struggled for two years. You don't know anybody? No. No letter? And then, then I was walking the streets and I walked the Hornby, Hornby Road, those days used to be Hornby Road. Mm -hmm. I was crossing and I saw a man my age, my ex-student from the same college, and he was walking across, he recognized me. And I recognized him. And he was also looking for a job, but he was staying in a chawl in, in, in Parel. So I went and stayed with him in the chawl for one or two years. But where did you hang out? How could you meet people? All the intellectuals and the pseudo intellectuals and all the jobless people who deserve jobs, they would be hobnobbing in uh, the prison dairy. They used to give, give wonderful um, coffee and, and, huh. and great milk, hot milk and they would converse and exchange notes and I used to be there every evening. Yeah. And who were the other strugglers with you at that time? I saw Raj Kapoor also hanging out there, <laughs> but then Raj Kapoor got his break earlier because I think he, he, his father was a big star and he knew a lot of film people. So it was actually in the Parisian dairy, in that hangout, that you learnt of your first break? Yes, I met an acquaintance. Mm. He said, what are you doing here? I've been chasing you. I said, why? Because there's a nice break waiting for you. I said, where? He said, go to Prabhat Film Studio and then need a young boy. He, I think you suit, suit that role. Okay. So he gave me Mr. Barbara Pai's address. And next day, I was outside his office 
meeting with the chaukidar who would not let me in. I insisted I'm going to wait for him. <laughs> and then Barbara Pai comes, mm -hmm. s goes straight to his office and gives this little pause, looks back for a few seconds into my eyes, goes inside, rings the bell and calls this, this the guard. Who is this boy sitting outside? He says, yes, he wants to meet you. Get him in. I said, I'm from Lahore, I was in government college, I've done honours in English, I'm in Bombay and I'm looking for a job and I believe there's a great role waiting for, for, for a young boy of my age in your studios, so I, I, I went to audition yeah. for that. And then he said, can you come back to the office day after tomorrow? My director is coming. I, I want you to meet him. And the director was P.L. Santoshi, Rajkumar, Raj Kumar Santoshi's father. father. And Santoshi also took a liking to me. They said, can you go to Pune for an audition? I said, certainly yes. So they gave me a first class ticket by deck and queen to go to Pune. And I went like a lord. I never traveled first class. I went <laughs> like a lord. And they took my audition and I spoke a few lines. In fact, I got so excited, I developed fever. <laughs> and uh, after a few days, I was told I was in. Chote Babu, after that, how many rupees came to ताजुब है, तुमने नहीं दिए, माने नहीं दिए, तुमने तो नहीं दिए। वासन कर रही है। मैं बगैर तुम्हारे पूछे कैसे दे सकता हूँ? हाँ, एक बात हो सकती है। क्या? But I was so stupid. I didn't know anything about acting. कर, कर उसे कौन देगा? कौन नहीं देगा उसे? Oh, नहीं नहीं, ये बहुत बुरी बात है। I don't look at my old pictures, I don't look at my interviews at all, because I think I'm utterly stupid. Today's my youngsters, today's leading men, they, 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 they know everything. In 1948, when you were still a newcomer, you were signed opposite the greatest singing star of the time, Suraya. Yes, Suraya was a big star and I was cast opposite her. Everybody on the set used to pamper her, Suraya ji, Suraya ji, Suraya ji. She used to come on the sets, everyone would get up on the seats. Mm. And I would, I would just look. I am innocent and shy. She is famous and successful. Our relationship is an attraction of the opposites. This was a first calf love and I fell in love. Sixty years have passed, Dev Saab, but yet, you know, that romance still lives on in people's imaginations. Does it surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me, because I'm still there. You were 25 at that time. She was 20. It must have been very romantic, both of you. Yeah, I think so, because I think it was great. I, I, I thought I was in love with a beautiful girl. I think more than physical, it's, 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 the, it's the beautiful imagination that you think about each other. When you're sleeping, when you're getting up, and you're sitting close to each other, and you're holding hands, and then you want to be together, and, you, and then you're together. You, you see a Mogra woman passing mm. by and you're thinking of a sweetheart, you say, why, why can't I grab one and give it to her? But I think you do all childlike things when mm. you're in love with, with a girl. Where did you meet? On the sets. Only on sets? On the locations. Well, naturally I used to go to a house. I used to travel by train and get off the train and go to a house. I, I, I pass Krishna Mahal every day, even now. Great days, great moments. So you decided to get married to her? I thought, yeah, I, I proposed to her. And she accepted? She wanted to, she was not allowed to. You bought her an engagement ring as well? I did. I sent it to her, I don't know what happened. People said she threw it in the river, I never asked her. People say her grandmother threw it? Well, she didn't like me, she didn't like me at a certain stage. The grandmother? In fact, we cast her in love, sir. And there was a beautiful shot. And the hero needs to kiss the girl in the eyes. And those days kissing in the eyes That's even was big. objectionable by mm. the censors. And the granny knew that we were friendly and she would not leave the sets. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then we had to maneuver in such a way that Chetan would say, take her out for a little while for a little gossip, a little talk. And when she went away, we took the shots quickly. Oh. And, and so he was not objecting to it. I think he was... There was something about her that she, she was tied to the apron strings of her family in, in a very big way. She had the grandmother, she had the mother. She had a lot of um, um, people um, um, close to her, movie people, industry people, directors. Um, when you're a big star, everybody's yeah, crowding around. around you all the time. The hangers-on, the suitors, the present suitors, the would-be suitors. It happens to all young girls. She She's like a like queen bee. But she must have been very torn at that time, no? 
you she was in love with but, but she was young and she she was mm, holding her head high and youth is very arrogant at that moment you you're the queen of the world when you're a big star you are pretty and people the world falling at your feet you're like the queen of the world no things never come to your mind it comes much later but did she ever tell you that you know the family but i i realized later that after i got the note from her then she was probably regretting it it was too late because i i had gone out of it I could not, not marry her, her and I was, I was dejected, dejected and I, I cried and I sobbed and, and then I forgot about it. Did she tell you herself that it's not they're not allowing us? She never told me. Huh. And uh, there was came a time when I could meet her. Uh, huh. I I had to go via somebody else. Send her a letter through somebody else. Durga Khote and Kamini Khote. Durga Khote was a great yeah, she was she was great help to me. So then uh, how did you find out that uh, the family was objecting? to newspapers but not through her no never because she never would come, come out and say she was, i think she was little timid oh from that point of view oh. your relationship with saraya became a bit of a communal issue at that time it was time. The, mostly that basically yeah, to i that. think they didn't want uh, me to get married to a muslim girl this is what the newspapers had then said yeah. and th this was and fact. they didn't want her but uh, at the back of it was uh, I think with some people who were interested in her in marrying her am sadik i don't know Uh, is it true that she was made to swear on the Quran that she would not marry Devanand? People told me so. People told me so, but I never bothered to ask. But if she'd done it, I wouldn't like her, because I'm a very liberal man, and I'm a very broad-minded man. Yeah. Look, there's a difference between a girl who comes and says, "Look, I love you. I want to go with you yeah. and help with the world," yeah. and a girl who loves you and says, "How will I? My mum, my dad." my people my religion it made, it made a man, man out of me and they grew i cried but after crying i became stronger very strong but uh, she never married again now i know that now i've already said so you never saw her again no i met her once in a party and that's about all once or twice and she was very heavily bejeweled and carrying a lot of gold and silver on her body recently when the news came that she'd passed away somebody called me and i felt bad yeah. and somebody said she's in that hospital i didn't want to go yeah. because see me your sorrows are in your citadels of loneliness they're not to be shared with the world I mean, you you sort of live in the world is photographing you and putting the headline and 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 the cameras are are are, are following all the time on the TV. I didn't want that. They would ask me lots of questions, left, right, and center, which I did not want to answer that moment. Because Surya was Surya. She was a beautiful girl. She was a lovely actress. She was a great singer. I loved her. She loved me back, and I knew. And I just kept quiet. And I I went in a corner. And I felt very sad. Sad about the whole situation. Sad about her, but maybe she was released from the sorrow. Who knows? But she must be having a lot of other sorrows as well. But this is not the only one. Fifty years, she must have gone through a lot of other things. Devanan was not the only thing, but unfortunately, she was not working. When you're working, That's it happens. Right. When you're not working, then you start thinking. You start drowning yourself in sorrow. So they said in the 1950s you launched Nakitan. Right from that time it's been a a gathering a fountain head of talent. All new intelligent people, yeah. intellectuals. All of these people grew into big talents, big legends. Well, there was big lava inside them. What, what they were made waiting it? to be to be bursting. Yeah. In the beginning they were they didn't, didn't look talented, but when Bazi was released, you should have seen the magic of Bazi. Six, seven people came out into the field, flying colors. Each one of them, Gurudev, Balat Sani, S. T. Burman, Geeta, Geeta Bali, Sahil Udhyanvi. Of course, it gave me an image. Absolutely, it started a Devanand cult. Suit, pasand hai? Kya khayal hai? Aur raise mein bura nahi hai? Acha hai. Mera bhi yeh khayal hai. My first stardom was in Bazi. You can't imagine what happened. I knew I was a star. आज सुबह जब मैं घर से आ रहा था तो कॉलेजों की छोकरियां मेरी तरफ यूं लपक रही थीं कि जैसे मुर्गी चावल के दाने हाउ स्टाइलिश यू लुक्ड आई वाज जस्ट माय सेल्फ 
I used to plan my own clothes. How did you develop that whole style of talking, walking, the mannerisms? It was just me. Salam, Mr. Yeah, I was full of dreams. I was always excited. I was never hung on to my sorrows. The very fact I've starved in the streets of Bombay. Yeah. I never bothered. Lived in Charles and never bothered. But you know, one can see today clearly how film by film, song by song, the Devanand legend was built. <laughs> Music has to be haunting. Music must, it must stir your soul. She was a beautiful girl. If she starts laughing at something, Allah says she would, would not stop. Kishore Kumas used to be my, my, my voice and whenever he would sing in front of the microphones he would keep me in, in his mind as an actor. I think Nav Ketan has given some great, great music in all the pictures. Each song has been deliberately composed, sitting on the ground. Are you very musical yourself? Very, very, uh, very musical minded. Ah. Will you sing for me? I don't know which one. So lovely to see you sing this for me. <laughs> There's a sad part of it, it's very beautiful too. Sukhaar dukh ke raaste Bane hai sab ke vaaste Jo gham se haar jaavoge To kis tarah nibhaavoge Hushi mile hume ya gham I continue my rendezvous with this modern, young, stylish octogenarian. From the 40s to the 21st century, he's arrived, devotees intact. Your grandmother was his fan, so was your mother. And I guess your daughter will be too, for the legend continues. Dave Anand. Can I take you back to 1951? Yes. During the making of Bazi, the audience and you were introduced to a Sikhni called Mona Singh. Yes. And my brother called her Kalpna Kartik. Young girl. Bubbly, naughty, educated from Simla. And we loved, liked each other, fell in love, and we married. But married secretly? Yeah, because we decided to, be, to get married secretly. Cute. Isn't marriage a very personal affair? Yeah, well, <laughs> I don't have a problem with that. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it depends. Why did you decide to but We just decided. Had you planned to do it secretly yeah, we or had, did you? We have planned to, look, we'll get married, huh. we will not tell anybody. Okay. And then if we, we throw a reception and then when well gets to know, we'll, we'll invite everybody else. And therefore I was working on the sets. Of Taxi and Driver. Taxi Driver. And we were together. Mm. And it was so planned, the, the, the registrar was to come. We had to sign the register and mm. I had the ring in my pocket. So in between the breaks when the lighting was being done, I signaled to her, we went into the art department room, we got married, came back, and the cameraman, because she had the ring on the finger, he said, a continuity, this was not there. <laughs> and he knew of my affair with her, and he was, he was in confidence. Ooh. So I said, shut up. I said, don't speak <laughs> about this later, let's take the shot first. <laughs> Great fun, why not? I got married to Mona in lunch break, and that was the greatest moment. 
haven't seen Mona Ji for years. Mona is, again, she's busy with her own work. She's a Christian lady. She's turned Christian? No, she was Christian. I thought she was a Sikhni. No. She's not saying, she's a singer. Oh, okay. Christian girl and she's a Christian girl in okay. the real sense. And she's very close to her religion. And I don't interfere because I think it's a very, again, a personal affair. Like I'm a Hindu and she's a Christian. So I keep my faith and she keeps her faith. And I'm, I'm very liberal. She's keeping well? She's keeping very well. And she's very busy with her, with her work. With, with the church? She's with the books. She's with the people of that religion. Was she always very religious? I think so. In her? I think so. But people say that she's become somewhat of a recluse now. No, she, she has her own friends, suiting her own temperament mm. and her own, own, own way of thinking. But she doesn't come out to public functions or anything anymore? No, she doesn't want that. She's involved with herself and she just doesn't want it also. Sometimes but I say, let's go, no, no, you go and I'll, I'll, be, rather, I'll rather be here. But uh, she was used as a star, she was used to the limelight. If you re remember, Mona at that moment, she had just done three pictures and then we got married. Mm. After marriage, we did a picture called Nodogyara, that yeah. was the fourth picture. After she never worked, she had not become that, that big a star mm. as to miss stardom. Okay. You see? And if she had become a bigger and bigger and a very, very big star, she would have probably got these ideas into her head. Then you cannot give as much of time to your stardom as you to your own personal life. She chose that way. I, I, I never stopped her. Mm. Yeah. You've been married now for 50 years almost. How important a part of your life is marriage? Look, we're still together, of course. Any husband, wife, they have their tiffs, they have their small little quarrels, they, and it happens in all walks of life. There's more chance here because you're more exposed to a lot of temptations. You have new leading ladies all the time, you're going on location, you're flirting with people, and I think innocent flirtation is nothing wrong with it. But I have retained my family life, and I still go good to my kids. They're lovely and they're very charming to me, and I am a good father, and um, I go back to my dinner table every evening. Did, she, did Mona ever get bothered by your little flirtations? She must have. I'm sure she has off and on. But I, and she's an educated girl. I made her understand. <laughs> so if there ever was a tape, if there ever was a quarrel, well, it must have been very temporary and she must have got over it. But uh, there's some people I feel, you know, made for marriage and family life, if you know what I mean. And some people who have this all-consuming passion for work. That on the letter. You're the latter. The letter. A lot of people ask me, don't you find time for family life? I said, yeah. do you expect me to be sitting in the bedroom all the time, talking to her? No, I'm creative. I'm meant for the world. When she got married, she knew about this. Yeah. There, there are different aspects of me. I'm a family man to an extent, this much and not further. I'm, I'm a very dutiful father. You I are. Give, I am, I give them all that they need, mm. but then I'm also a man belonging to the world. Mm. I'm tremendously creative. Mm. And that's, that, that ex explains my survival. But you're a detached sort of a person, aren't you? I am a detached man. Yeah. A loner. A loner. Intelligent. Sharp. True. But quiet. Withdrawn. Alone. And liking it. Are you emotional? Very emotional. Tremendously emotional. I have a very, very, very soft heart. Mm. I feel for people. I can see that. People can cheat me. Ah. And I don't mind being cheated if I can afford it. If it helps them. But it, they should not cheat me in such a way that they should make a stupid... Ruin you. Ruin me. Mm. Are you demonstrative? No. No? Not at all. You don't show your feelings? No. Why? I don't know. That's my temperament. You're shy. Very shy. Still shy. I'm very shy. Are you sentimental? Very sentimental. That too. Tremendously sentimental. That's why you have you this have diary. Book. Yeah. Mm. But tell me, do you miss the fact that Mona Ji doesn't come out with you, travel with you? I don't miss it. You don't? No. You're happy? I'm happy like she's happy. Like you've worked out her yeah, comfort from, zone. Well, if she does, well, she, she's most welcome. What has it been like for Mona Ji to be the wife of Devanand for 50 years. 
I think you've got to ask her. How can I? <laughs> She's a wife. She's an independent lady. And she goes and attending her own, own small functions, which are very Christian functions. And she's also a mother besides a wife. Yeah. Devon is not big in my heart. He, right. He's just a father. He's just a father. He's just a husband. He's just Dev. But Devon on the outside is Devanand. But Devon at home is dad. Okay, dad, what the hell are you doing? You're stupid. I, I, I take all that. They say that to you? No, why not? In a very lighthearted way. <laughs> yeah, they, they tell me. They tell me, don't plan this, don't plan that. They do. But I, I ask them and my, my final decision is mine. And does Mona see your films? Not in the, in the trials that I normally hold, but I've never asked her. But I'm sure she has some friends and she goes, she gets to know. She keeps asking me, you've seen us like here, the like like my friends told me. But now she doesn't no. come to trial. No. Why? I, I don't know. She doesn't feel like it. I, I never force myself. But she's a very, very independent-minded lady, like I am, a very independent-minded man. Unlike other star kids, your kids, they stayed out of the limelight. My son Sunil, I gave him a break. When I cast him in, my, in that picture, Anand or Anand. I have come to India mein but he is certainly not hit the hit deadlines. Did it disappoint you a bit? Yeah, I think sometime when I think about this, I think it should have been bigger and bigger and he should have been uh, spelling some magic to the audience. Do you think he was carrying the burden of being Devanand's son? I'm sure he must be. I shouldn't have cast him with me. People compared, they made comparisons. But apart from that film, in his life? Again, I think he's, he's missed something. So I think you've got to compromise to the idea and not mm. get, get hung on to it. Mm. No use. This is, a, this is a part of life. And uh, what's Devina doing now? Devina uh, got married. She has a child who is now 14, 15 years old. Devina's marriage broke, didn't it? Yes. And you? I was very sad. It was painful for me when Divina separated. These youngsters get married in a passionate fit of decision and they regret it later. Divina is the darling of a daughter. And I was getting off my car and I saw her standing outside the door with a boyfriend. And I, I knew she was friendly with somebody, but my son had told me. And she just said, Papa, you want to get married? And I looked into her and I said, are you sure that you're in love with this boy? So as to marry him, she said, yes. And after the first child, they broke. Oh. And I, f that's the time I cried again, the second time. I said, it's not done. But, but my sorrows are very, very short-lived. Few seconds. I said, forget it. I said, for I said, this is part of life. It happens to everybody. Nothing wrong. Who knows something better may come, on, come off it. Deep Sab, you said that once a film is made, it's out of your system. Yes. Is it the same for relationships? No. But you start taking relationship for granted. And why not? A relationship should not become a burden on you and your conscience. If it becomes tension, mm. then it's not worth it. Mm. You've always had a close association with your discoveries. In your relationships, the girls have always been young, modern, attractive, and... Am because the medium needs it. And ambitious. If you're a star, you have to be ambitious. But was that heartbreaking for you? No. Why? Listen, my sorrows don't stay with me longer. Where do you put them? Where do they go? Because I proceed on. I proceed on and they go negative. They're all there, they're all good friends. Okay. You so can I, I was meeting with Zina the other day. We met at the Indo American Society and it's a great meeting. So, so you so convert it to friendship? No, it has to be. There's no alternative. Everybody has gone through heartbreaks. I'm no exception. Mm. Except that I've got some extra qualities that other, other people don't have. I'm not the one to go and commit suicide. Mm because I'm more enlightened. I think if you reach that stage of life, 
that nothing affects you. Zindagi ye khayal hai jaise ke maut ye khayal hai. Na sukh hai, na dukh hai, na deen hai, na dunya, na insaan, na bhagwan. Sirf main, main, main. You have to detach and go further. Of this stage of life, it, you shed a tear and you wipe it away in a second and you back to yourself. And you keep that sort in your, in your pocket. It, it's your pet. You proceed further. Unbelievable. Are you going to tell me the secret of what you do to keep yourself looking so good? I don't do anything deliberately to keep myself fit. Is there some secret potion you make at night at 2 in the morning and have no, that makes you I, like I, this? I, I'm very normal. <laughs> oh, come on. I think everybody's like me. So what do you eat? Vegetarian food. At this age, at this age I'm off sugar. I don't drink, I don't smoke. And I have like any Punjabi food. Good dal and good vegetables <laughs> cooked and good chapatis. I enjoy that. If so, when I look at you, I, I just see this, the span of experience that you've been through. And uh, that's mind-blowing. It's not just uh, s the 60 years panoramic view of films. It's the sweep of history, of politics, of technology. You saw Hitler invading I've, Europe. Yes, I've seen Bush everything. invading Iraq. I've seen everything happen through my eyes yeah. and grabbed it and imbibed it and learned from it and moved on. They've said stars have come and gone in front of you, rising and fading out. Why has Devanand endured? Because I never sat on my laurels. I never thought I was great. I was always analyzing and improving. Yeah. But why did they burn out and not you? The Rajesh Khannas came and went. When you start thinking to yourself, look, this was great and this couldn't be better. I'm the biggest, I'm the greatest. Who's the biggest? Who's the greatest? There's always somebody better than you are. Right behind you, there's a generation coming. Both in show business and in politics. There is going to be somebody who's going to beat you anytime. Keep that in mind. Okay. You know, the people are learning from you to beat you in your own game. Very true. You have to be a bit of a gambler. Yeah. A devil of a person. And, and all my brothers, they don't have this spirit. I have it. I pick up a project mm. and I close my eyes and I ask my conscience, mm. supposing it's not big, will you be able to suffer? Mm. Will, you, will, 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 you, will you be able to, to accept the defeat? And I say to myself, yes, I think I shall accept it if it happens. Let's try that. I like that. You haven't become cynical. No, not at all. And you're not superstitious? No, I'm not. Mm. I don't take my cans to the Tripoti temple at the feet of the Lord no. to give me the success. Look, if I've not done something good, what, how the success would come to me? Yeah. But if it doesn't come to me today, it'll come to me tomorrow. When your recent films haven't done well, do you analyze that? Yes, I know that. You know what, what makes them not work? Yes, I know. And Look, I may have blundered in one picture, <laughs> but I will not blunder in the other one. I may have learned from my blunders. You know, people get to a point where they say, look, I'm tired. I've done enough. I just want some peace and quiet. But that's the last thing you want. It'll never happen to me. I'll never get tired. Your mind never gets tired. Your body gets tired. Mm. It's not a clerk's mind. It's the mind of a creator. Mm. How old do you feel today? As I came to Bombay, same, in my mind. I'm like a child. I'm like a child. So you feel you're 20? I think so. <laughs> so then what do you want to do when you grow old? <laughs> grow. One never grows old. One, <laughs> one just grows, matures and dies. Never tell a man or a woman you're growing old. No. You only say you matured. You matured. You're beautiful. Any fears? No, not even death. If it comes to me, I'll take it. It has to come to everybody. Look, I've reached a stage. Go back to my statement of the guide. Na dukh hai, na sukh hai, na deen hai, na dunya. You are sleeping. And you close your eyes. 
and you are in different world and you're gone, you died, you've not suffered. Who knows where you are? It's only the people left behind who suffer, cry for you. This is what I've learnt. This is what I've learnt. I'm still learning. And I'll go on for many, many more years. To me, you do not know how much you are teaching me at this moment. Sitting in front of me, asking me a lot of questions. You are so introspective also. Deja, do you ever fear time running out? Time runs out, runs out for everybody. People die at the age of 30. I'm 80, energetic, working. If I was not working, it wouldn't be this way. What is the disadvantage of being 80? There's a big disadvantage of growing old if, if, if man is not creative. You're sitting at home and nobody's looking after you. You're in a wheelchair and the doctors come every day and everybody's sulking and cribbing. What the hell is man? Is you should die. He's a burden on society. But when you are giving something to the world, so might as well give it. By the way, did your father ever come around and see your success? Yes, yes. When, uh, when I became an actor and a recognized actor, he was happy in his, in his heart of hearts. He was very happy. Mm. But he was very man with great ego. He, he wanted to live separately and on his own. And then last time when, when he came, I remember, he was weak, he was frail, and he was, he was, there was a beautiful shine in his eyes. Mm. And he said, I, I was so happy you came, Dave. I never realized. But I knew, I knew that you would make something big. And though I never said so because I, I never wanted to disclose to you that I felt so proud of you at that moment too. I think it, it can happen to your father. So tell me, Dev Saab, tell the world, what has it been like to have been Devanand for 80 years? I went to the world of life and I went to the world of life and I went to the world of life. हर फिक्र को धुए में उड़ाता चला गया हर फिक्र को धुए में उड़ा यू कैन हैंग ऑन टू अरो इट्स वेस्ट ऑफ टाइम नो हैंग ऑन टू इट इट्स वेरी गुड यू डोंट कैरी बैगेज नो इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट नॉट टू दैट्स वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट इट्स वी ऑल कैरी बैगेज इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट नॉट टू जो मिल गया उसे तुमको दर समझ लिया जो मिल गया उसे तुमको दर समझ लिया मुख दर समझ लिया मुख दर समझ लिया आई कुड नॉट मैन एंड आई वॉज डिजेक्टेड एंड आई क्राइड एंड आई सॉप एंड देन फॉर गॉड अबाउट जो खो गया मैं उसको बुलाता चला गया हर फिक्र को धुए में उड़ा सनसेट इज ग्लोरियस थैंक्स इज ब्यूटीफुल बट लोनली द लोनलीनेस इज ब्यूटीफुल आल्सो यू मस्ट लर्न हाउ टू एंजॉय दैट गम और खुशी में फर्क न महसूस हो जहां टुमारो एनीथिंग कैन हैपन टू मी बट व्हाई थिंक अबाउट दैट हैपनिंग right now because i'm very optimistic why not even think even death could be a great thing which nobody has seen main dil ko us maqam pe laata chala gaya main dil ko us maqam pe laata chala gaya zindagi there must be something called destiny though i don't believe in it Let's not let's not call it destiny. Let's call it some vibrations of people around or, or some lobby somewhere. We do not know. But who's there to bless you? Some unseen power, but nobody has seen that unseen power. I think it's its own inner self, probably. I think you bless your own self ultimately. Deep Sab, you're truly a phenomenon. You know. Can I just say quite simply that I'm proud to know you I'm proud to have worked with you and very proud to have you on my show today Thank you so much and I've been looking forward to seeing you keep as you are and you are the same same as you were same charm same elegance same style of speaking 
and same carefree attitude also. Thank and you. I like it. Well, thank, thank you very much for calling me. Thank you for this prompt. Thank you.